every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good morning and thank you for joining us on Core TV News on the R. I am Ebunlomo Adekunle. Nigeria's military has officially confirmed that a Boko Haram commander who has been posing as Abubakar Shikau in videos was killed in Konduga. It also hinted that the real Shikau had since died and Bashir Muhammad had been appearing in propaganda videos released by the insurgents group. Defence spokesman Chris Olukolade said at a press briefing that Shikau is now a brand name for the leader of the insurgent group. He also revealed that over 100 insurgents have turned themselves into troops in Brno and Adamar State in the last 24 hours. Combat vehicles, which is typical when the mission involves their top commanders, were fiercely engaged by the land and air forces that were there to keep watch. In the process, several of the terrorists, including some of their top commanders, lost their lives in the encounters, which lasted an average of about five hours each time. In the process, the troops were able to capture some of the terrorists, as well as their equipment. That's in addition to those that died. And in the course of those encounters also, one Mohammed Bashir, who has been acting or posing on videos as the deceased Abubakar Shekau, that eccentric character that is known as the leader of the group, died in that operation. Since the name Shekau has become a brand name for anyone who leads the, the group, since the name Shekau has become a brand name for the terrorist leaders, the Nigerian military remains resolute and determined to serve justice to anyone who assumes that designation or title, as well as all terrorists that seek to violate the freedom and territory of Nigeria. The police authorities say two out of the 20 policemen that escaped from the attack on the mobile training school in Goza have died. Acting Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Abba, said at press briefing that another police personnel declared missing has also resurfaced. He, however, refer reaffirmed the police commitment to locating over 15 men who are still missing since August. We are still making efforts to locate some of our colleagues that were missing after the attack. What is promising is that even early this week, I cannot tell you that any one of them, other than the ones we know, the two we have told you earlier on, that we have confirmed that, yes, they have died of their injuries and their corpses were recovered and even handed over to their family and buried with all honors. We cannot tell you that anyone has died apart from those two. As Nigeria prepares to mark 15 years of democracy, the federal government says it will do all in its power to restore peace in the northeast region. Information Minister Labaran Maku made this pledge on the sidelines of this week's Federal Executive Council meeting. 
He also lamented that trillions of naira spent on combating insurgency in the region could have been used to improve other sectors of the economy. We make progress and unite the rest, I mean, uh, uh, bring peace to that part of the country, which is a key economic zone. You know, because if you look at the Lake Chad region, it depends on, on Bruno State and Yobe. It's a huge area that is bigger than many countries in, 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 in Africa. So the turning piece there will uh, speed up the economic development of Nigeria and the prosperity of our nation. The House of Representatives has launched an investigation into the claim that some lawmakers were given $50,000 to frustrate debate on the controversial $9.3 million seized in South Africa. This was after a PDP member from Taraba State, Albert Samsoka, raised the matter on the matters of privilege. He identified an APC legislator, Ali Madaki, as the man who raised the allegations, which he insists tarnished the image of the House. Madaki admitted to making the claims to a journalist, but says he had no concrete proof. Deputy Speaker Emeka Hedioa, who presided over the sitting, however, referred the matter to the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges for investigation within two weeks. Senate President David Mack has blamed powerful lobby groups for frustrating an initial effort to control tobacco use in Nigeria, despite the passage of the bill in 2011. Mack revealed this on Wednesday after a fresh attempt to pass the national tobacco control scaled through the second reading. Senators engaged in an intense debate before the bill was referred to the Senate Committee on Health, which was mandated to conduct a public hearing of tobacco. We have to deal with uh, the use of tobacco and we must do it in such a regulated manner that it doesn't uh, create any economic distortion because if we don't address the economic issues properly then we'll end up with more of smuggled tobacco that is unregulated and our own local tobacco industries here will be left unprotected. I want to pray sir that Nigeria should be bold enough to take this decision because it is the interest of the health of the citizens to ban tobacco. Great uh, seeks to clearly tell you the danger inherent in smoking and uh, it also seeks to uh, regulate advertisement about smoking. Well, we've gone one step further to say, well, ban it also. But that, when it goes to a public hearing, then we will get public opinion on that. Let me remind us that we passed this uh, bill, actually, in the Sixth Senate. And Mamora was the sponsor. He talked extensively, and we had a similar debate. Uh, the same way we talk now, people who want to go to hell, and they see it, if they want to walk in there, we should allow them to walk in there. Others say, no, restrict them. Don't let them walk in there. Uh, when it goes for public hearing, we, they will decide whether people should be allowed to freely walk to hell or, or we should restrain them from walking to hell. The committee is expected to turn in a report in four weeks. It's the Core TV News on the hour. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more stories. Don't go away. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. 
Many thanks to you for being there. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar says he's seeking to become Nigeria's president because the country appears to be on autopilot with no one in charge. He cited the lingering security situation and low human development index to justify his stance on non existent government and poor leadership. Atiku Abubakar also promised the government with zero tolerance for corruption and nepotism. It was one of the worst kept secrets in Nigeria's politics. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar had several weeks ago made it known he was joining the race for the presidency. And now he has formally declared his interest at an elaborate event attended by his political associates. The former vice president was quite emphatic in declaring his readiness to seek his party's nod for the 2015 elections. With the support of millions of Nigerians desirous of change and the hard work by all of us, the NDC shall form the next government of this great nation. I have therefore decided that I will, by the grace of God, along with other respected leaders of our party, seek nomination as a candidate of the APC to contest the presidential election of 2015. For a man who is a veteran of several political battles, he did not hold back in throwing barbs at the Jonathan's administration. Atiku recounted the achievements of the Obasanjo years and concluded that the incumbent government has fared worse. The government has a responsibility to do everything possible to hold ongoing dehumanization of Nigeria. Unfortunately, what we have is a serious governance deficit. To put it bluntly, our country seems to be on autopilot with no one in charge. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a strong, dynamic, decisive, competent and visionary leadership that can hold the current dream of the ship of state, fight corruption, create jobs, rebuild our infrastructure, provide social services and tackle insecurity in a decisive, robust, and multi branch way. This is the change. He argued that Nigeria needs a strong visionary leadership and promised to head a government with zero tolerance for corruption and nepotism. Of Aziz Ashake, a member of the All Progressives Congress, has packed off arguments and accusations between the deceased's family and one of the major political parties involved in Sunday's shootout among political thugs, which occurred in the Lagos Island. Oluwase Yadigoke visited the late Ashake's family and brought back this report presented from our studio. <laughs> This is the reaction of family members and neighbors of Aziz Ashake, who was said to be murdered by some political party talks in Lagos. Ni O se mi tin to ninu complex nbe yen o bole bayi to wa si bibi ton joko ton se faji no wa pe bi pe awon omo pdp ton bo lati race course bi pe won ti attack awon boys nbe yen lo lo si be pe lati lo scare awon pe e ma ja o stop awon ti bi o stop awon tohun pe e gboro ja awon lo won fe wa la fi ni wa la awon pe labija ti ri ra awon ti soro asabija wa la rin won ato loko dano won ni gba to ma yi si odo group won bayi Reacting to the allegation against the People's Democratic Party, the party state's publicity secretary, Ganil Taufik, 
says the allegations are false and unsubstantiated. The APC has become uh, a party that is always quick uh, to cry wolf, especially when they are involved in this dastardly act. It is commonsensical that members of the same family should ordinarily not fight themselves. So why would anybody come up with the argument that after a PDP rally, PDP members started fighting themselves and then their target was to kill an APC member? That is very incredible to believe. What happened as part of what I've been told was that some APC members laid ambush on our members who were leaving the TBS premises. And as our members on the island were going on their streets on same island, the APC members fired at them. Of course, that is logical because if you saw the mammoth crowd on that day, you will know that any sitting government will be intimidated if an opposition can have such mammoth crowd. So we believe that the mammoth crowd that they saw that day uh, intimidated them and unwarrantedly provoked them. Lagos State Police Public Relations Officer Ngoza Braid declined comments over the incidents. The Akita State House of Assembly has summoned the Commission of Police and a director of the Department of Security Service over the recent disruption of proceedings and assault of those present by hoodlums at the State High Court. Rashid Rashid has more in this report. The Akita State House of Assembly expressed shock at reports of an invasion of a court proceedings by thugs. The lawmakers argue that more worrisome is the fact that the thugs carried out their act in broad daylight in the presence of security forces. A situation where judges and lawyers were being chased around the court premises, attempting whether to kill or beat them, as the case may be, it's a dangerous dimension. The security agencies in the state to live up to their social responsibility. Because it is only when they live up to their social responsibility that we can have atmosphere of atmosphere of peace. What stops hoodlums from invading the Kitty State House of Assembly? However, the police in Ekiti State say it should not be blamed for the unfortunate situation. Security was provided there at the court premises. Uh, but the hoodlums they came in their thousands and they scaled the dwarf wall of the court into the court premises. At that point in time, the security men, the policemen in the court premises called for reinforcement. And uh, between the time uh, they the, 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 the called for the reinforcement and the time the reinforcement actually came, uh, certain, uh, some other things happened. The prompt intervention of the reinforcement forestalled what would have been a colossal and a monumental uh, damage. The Akiti State House of Assembly, among other resolutions, summoned the leadership of the police and Department of State Security Service for detailed explanation. Condemn it as barbaric. As barbaric. One. Two. Invite the Commissioner of Police and the Director of SSS to come and make certain clarifications because they are in charge of security of the states to come and make clarifications on that particular issue. Then three, that the House Committee on Judiciary should actually look and investigate, you know, both the, what actually led, you know, to such an ugly, you know, situation. The news of the court invasion has attracted condemnation from far and near. Residents in Ikiti State say they are hopeful that investigation by the House of Assembly will prevent future occurrence. Rashid Rashid, RTV News, Adwekiti.
Meanwhile, the Akiza State's chapter of the Nigerian Bar Association has joined in condemning the recent invasion of the Adoikiti High Court by hoodlums. The NBA described it as desecration on the Temple of Justice. Protests also read its head as another stampede allegedly targeted at disrupting the court from further hearing of the E11 case against the governor-elect Ayofayoshi ensued. Rashid Rashid again brought back this report. Is rocking the Ekiti State High Court sitting in Adoikiti in be far from over as early protesters stormed the court premises with the plan to stop further hearing of the case between the E11 and governor-elect Ayofayoshi. The case was, however, put on hold. After the protest, the Yekiti State Chapter of the Nigerian Bar Association converged to condemn what is becoming a trend. Our heartfelt abjuration and condemnation of, one, the desperation of the hallowed temple of justice in Yekiti State, two, also, the fears already inflicted on the psyche of his uh, revered officers or priests uh, of that temple of justice. The lawyers frown at the plan by politicians to drag the court into the mud, a move that say signifies imminent danger for the judiciary. This type of ugly incident will be the last time uh, the political class in the state we ever venture to extend their pensions or mischiefs into these hollow chambers of justice. If our political leader allow the public to lose confidence in the law courts, they will be cutting a serious anarchy in the system, the end result of which nobody can fathom for now. With the security threat posed at lawyers and judges, especially after the ugly Monday incident, the NBA has compelled the police to fortify the court with adequate security. The bar strongly recommends to the Commissioner of Police to provide accurate security for the judges in uh, high, volatile and celebrated cases, such as the ones under reference, to carry out his duty. However, the renewed threat, according to observers, appears far from over. Rashid Rashid. TV news. The police high command has again assured Nigerians of adequate security before, during and after the 2015 elections. Acting Inspector General of Police Suleiman Abba said at a meeting with senior officers in Abuja that all parts of the country would be adequately policed. He also promised that the police would improve on its strategies in the ongoing fight against terrorism in the country. We have made adequate arrangements to make sure that the police provide sufficient security to all the activities leading to the polling days of the election. These activities have started and they include the registration of voters, the primaries, the selection of candidates, their screening, the conventions by the parties, and many others, including the very important one, which are the campaigns. And outside Nigeria, France has confirmed that an Algerian jihadist group linked to Islamic State militants has beheaded terrorist Herb Goldel seized on Sunday. John Al Khalifa killed Goldel 55 after its deadline for France to hold airstrikes on IS in Iraq ran out. John Al Khilafa posted a video of Goodell being killed, which was entitled Message of Blood for the French Government. He's shown on 
his knees with his hands behind his back in front of four masts and militants. He's allowed briefly to express his love for his family before one of the militants read out a speech in which he denounces the actions of the French criminal crusaders against Muslims in Algeria, Mali and Iraq. The beheading, the spokesman says, is to avenge the victims in Algeria and supports the caliphate proclaimed by ISIS in Iraq and Syria. French President François Hollande has condemned the killing as a cruel and cowardly act. He says that French airstrikes which began on ISIS targets in Iraq last week would continue. The group has also threatened to kill Alan Hennin, a taxi driver from the UK who was seized while on an aid mission to Syria in December. NATO says it has observed a significant withdrawal of Russian troops from eastern Ukraine, but adds that some forces still remain there. Military official Jay Jensen says it is difficult to determine the number of soldiers in Ukraine as per Russian separatists control several border crossings. Jensen says there has been a significant pullback of Russian conventional forces from inside Ukraine, but many thousands are still deployed in the vicinity of the border. He, however, claims Russian special forces are still operating in Ukraine but are difficult to detect. Ukrainian officials have repeatedly stated that thousands of heavy armed Russian troops remain portioned, positioned on the country's eastern border. Ukrainian military journalists claimed that Russian troops built up also continued in northern Crimea where several air defense systems were moved. Ukraine's parliament passed a bill last week granting three years self-rule to parts of the Donetsk and Lugansk regions. The decision was condemned by some MPS as capitulation. And that's it on the news for this hour. Do join us again top of the hour for more. Thank you for watching. I am Ebulomo Adekunle.